I am at school now and I apologize for the rough quality of I think Thursday and Friday's clips from last week. This dum dum right here realized that I had the wrong camera settings. So I fixed it. This is a brand new setting. Hopefully it looks a lot better. I'm finally shooting in 1080 instead of 720 I think it is technology. I used to have it, now it seems to evade me. Anyway, this morning I have just been kind of running around doing some odds and ends. I just finished typing up my kindergarten screening letter for my kindergarten teachers. Just that we usually, the way our county works is we have them, the teachers, have a checklist for identifying potential speech and language issues and then they submit it to us and the children that they feel that they've checked either sometimes or always for the specific boxes we go in then and give a screen or two just as a way to do universal screenings but to weed out the kids that they definitely don't think have a problem and then we kind of take it from there. So I have to go make photocopies of all of those screeners. I think I need like 85 and then put them in their mailboxes with this letter. This year I'm giving them way more time to do it. Um, I'm not actually asking for them back until the 22nd of September, that Friday, so then I can just start the last week of September with screening any kids that might have potential speech and language issues or might be at risk for them, and we'll kind of go from there. Other than that, I had a little bit of a labor of love this morning with my chart paper. I hung up all of my hooks. I have them there, and then I put them on the back of the door. The, the ones on the back of the door are for the pocket chart for when we have a lockdown drill. This way, I don't have to worry about getting fabric or anything or trying to nail in a curtain rod or screw one in, drill one in. And then on the brick wall, I have it to hang up my T-chart paper. And initially, my plan was to put the chart paper there and to make my charts over there. but it doesn't stay stuck to the wall. Like the tape will, but then the hook on the tape, it's it's not strong enough and it just peels off and the chart paper falls down. So what I think I'm gonna do, if you can tell the chart paper's kind of drooped over behind the desk back there, is I'm going to put two hooks on the blackboard, chalkboard, it's not black, green board, and I'm going to hang it there to see if it sticks a little bit better. I don't really use the chalkboard ever. I kind of wanted to see if I could get a whiteboard for it. There wasn't one and the whiteboard vinyl paper that I was looking at or the vinyl that you can just peel and stick didn't get the best reviews. There was a lot of ghosting they said so I just scrapped that this year but I think I am going to try to put the t-chart up there and then I can make the charts and do all of my writing up at the chalkboard and then once I'm done with them, all of the extras as we collect them throughout the year, I can hang on the wall back there and hopefully that'll be light enough that we don't have to worry about it collapsing. I'm going to go make some photocopies of the screeners now for the teachers though and put them in their mailboxes so they have them for today. Today is the eclipse, so we're having indoor recess and indoor PE. I'm kind of excited to watch it. They're going to send us the link for the live stream, so I think I might do that this afternoon for a little bit, just as I'm finishing up some work. My one friend still isn't in the system for me to write his IAP. I'm going to go ahead and start with a blank one, just filling in all of the info, and we'll kind of take it from there. If he gets in this week, that's awesome. I can transfer all the information in, but if not, I'm ready to go because we got to get rolling. I just made these rule posters up really quick. They're just full page. I did them on cardstock with a watercolor background. I'm only going with one rule this year the of being kind and then to yourself, to your peers, and to your teacher. Hopefully that works. I had to change it up since last year's was sitting quietly, not wiggling around, and since we're doing flexible seating this year, those don't really apply. So we're going with one giant rule of being kind and then just the three categories underneath it. And that's how they'll earn each of their speech books. If they're kind to themselves by following directions and paying attention, if they're kind to their peers by not calling out, and if they're kind to their teacher just by, once again, following directions, paying attention, using polite words. 
some of our friends have difficulty with that. I do want to make a big poster sized one of just like four squares. Unfortunately, our printer is out of waste toner though, so the office was able to print these two for me, but they don't have Adobe DC on their computer, so they don't have the ability to split it and blow it up so it could print on four separate pages. So that will have to wait, but I'm thinking of putting that right down here in this area once I get it cleared off. And this way, since the kids will be sitting on the ground, it'll be at eye level for them and large enough to kind of get their attention and to act as a visual reminder for our three rules. I think I'm gonna try to hang up the T-chart paper. I'm trying to find a good spot on the chalkboard to hang it. I'm thinking over there-ish so that this way I'm not completely blocking everyone's view if I'm writing on it. I have to fix my Halloween banner. As you can tell, that has fallen. Ta -da! This one stays so much better than it did over there. So I'm really glad that I figured out how to make them stick. Hopefully they do stay. They seem a lot sturdier, just because this is a much smoother surface. But I am super excited about that. I do want to use a lot of T-charts this year, which is why I just want the paper pretty handy for whenever I'm going to use it. I will have to move this little table desk. Not quite sure where I'll put it. I might put it against my actual computer, and then this way it's just kind of out of the way but I can still get to it, and then I can just move my seat over. But it's finally coming along. These, I'm not sure actually where I'm gonna put them. I have some motivational quotes that I wanna put here, and probably on the back of the door. This I have to fix. This is just, we had an angry friend last year, so it, it unfortunately broke. I haven't figured out how to make it stay. I definitely need more than one hand to do this. There. It kind of stays intermittently and then will fall down. It's just after lunchtime right now and I have been trying to brainstorm some activities for next week for our first week of speech. What I am envisioning doing is kind of having a low-key activity that I can pull kids individually from to kind of get their baseline data for either their articulation or their language goals. So I'm looking for something that isn't just busy work where we're not gonna tie it into anything, but also something that they can do independently by themselves after we go over our rules and while I'm seeing all of the other kids. So I came up with this, I just, made it really quick. It is school year snapshot and then it's a Polaroid in the middle. And what I'm going to have them do is I want them to draw one of their goals for this school year. So by the end of the year, where do they hope to be? What's something that they want, whether it's academic related or social related. And then my older kids can kind of write a sentence or two at the bottom. But really I want them focusing on like where are they seeing themselves at the end of their school year. And this kind of ties in with a school-wide incentive that we started this year. We had a big piece of yellow paper out on the first day and as kids came off the buses we kind of had them write down what they hoped is going to happen this school year. So some of their hopes. So this is kind of piggybacking off of that and then it's not just busy work we can kind of discuss it and tie it in and target some language goals and also some articulation goals and it'll tie in nicely with when we go over and we make our chart about what it means to be kind since that is the main rule that I'm having this year um, in the speech room. I want them to define what it means to be kind, kind to themselves, kind to their peers, and kind to their teacher more so than just be nice. There's a whole bunch of different ways to be kind, and that's pretty much why I picked that one for the one rule, because I feel like it encompasses everything. If you're not following directions, you're not being kind to yourself, your peers, or your teacher, if you're talking back to the teacher and you're being mean, you're not being kind to them. 
or if you're talking mean to the students or putting your hands on other students, again, you're not being kind. If you're not doing your homework and you're not trying your best, you're not being kind to yourself. So I just really like that it's one rule, easy for kids to remember, but there's a lot of different ways to break it down. And we are gonna go over that on the first day because usually when I ask kids what it means to be kind, they mostly just say, be nice. And yes, that's one answer, but there's so much more to it. So we're gonna break down a T-chart of all the different ways that you can show that you're being kind. And then, like I said, that's how they will earn their speech books per session, one for being kind to themselves, one for being kind to their peers in their group, and the other for being kind to myself or the teachers in the hallway as we're walking to and from speech. So this is probably what I'm gonna do on the first day. I'm thinking it with most of my kids. There, there are a few kids that this wouldn't be beneficial for. I want to see if I can put together a beginning of the school year communication book, kind of, with Velcro icons that we can kind of go over together. Some of my lower preschool students, as well as some of my elementary age students with multiple disabilities, I think would really benefit from that. It also will help because a lot of them have trouble transitioning, so I can make the book tailored to their day. I'm going to email the teachers and kind of tell them when I'm taking them, and those are the kids that I'm really going to try hard this year to keep that time. I know I make at least 10 schedules a year with, you know, changes and everything happening. I move groups or I find out that two kids don't really work together in a group, so I'm always constantly changing things up, which is why I try not to give out too many emails about schedules. I do give out the first one and then I kind of say it's subject to change. And then usually by October, November, it's a pretty safe bet that that's pretty much how it's gonna be for the rest of the year, albeit some minor changes occurring. And then I usually tell them just as I'm picking them up, that this is probably going to be it. I hate having to go back and constantly say, okay, they moved from 1020 to 1040 and I'm going to grab them today, but now I'm moving them to a different day. It's just, it's really hard to kind of get a set schedule down and it just makes it really difficult. But these students that do have trouble with transitions and difference in routines and things like that, I'm going to try to keep them for as much as I can as humanly possible at this time the rest of the year so I'll change out other groups before I'm changing them out either the people in their group or their time or their day I want to keep them as centered as I can and this way after the first few you know week or two of speech when we're doing that book where we're talking about the routines okay first you're gonna go to special then after special it's time for speech and kind of just really embed that into their mind so that they know and they have a little bit of an easy, easier time transitioning I have alarms and timers set so that they know that when speech is over, then we go back. So when the bell rings, speech is done, we get our money, we go back to class. Just kind of all those different things to help with transitions. I am still, like I said, trying to come up with something for them. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do something as inclusive as a book. I'm trying. I think I should be able to do it just because it's Monday and I have until next Monday to make it, which means all of next weekend as well. But we're going to see. I'm going to try to get it done. I printed out my welcome back to speech letter. This is going home with my students who are getting speech homework this year, kind of just explaining the importance of speech homework. And then I also printed out my first speech homework assignment and there's three different assignments for parent signatures. And then I'm just going to fill in the words so it's not specific to different sounds. I can just fill these in. I also did that with the week. I do have to fix for the next time that I make these because I did have it use the speech words above in a sentence. This was when I was including the list on this page. I'm actually just going to attach a list, but it's fine for this one time. So what I'm going to do is here are the old speech folders. Ooh, there's a glare. And I just had a page projector in the center that had the old speech rules. But since we're not doing these anymore, I'm gonna take these out and take out this page protector and put them in these black folders because these are gonna be their homework folders. I'm probably still gonna use these red ones for the classroom, but rather than have it be something that they have to get every day all year, I'm going to have them just have it as a portfolio. So I might even keep them and stuff their work in here once it's completed and kind of do it like that so 
we'll see. I apologize if the lighting gets a little wonky. We are actually about 15 minutes away from the most coverage that we're going to get in this area for the eclipse, so the sunlight keeps shifting. Bear with me. This only happens every once in a while, so as much as I want to be annoyed about poor lighting, it's also kind of really cool. But I just wanted to show you, I found this while I was going through my speech folders, and if this isn't the sign of a newly seasoned teacher. I don't know what is. These were my rules when I first started, my first year as a speech therapist. I had eight rules. I don't know what I was thinking, but I had this long list of rules that the kids were supposed to follow. And I mean, some of them weren't like super big rules, like number eight is we have fun, but way too complex for the kids. And then I moved to the last year, last two years, I did the three rules of just quiet, quiet body, and then being respectful. And then, now, just one rule. So we went from eight to one. No longer overzealous in my hopes. But that's just for everybody out there who thinks that you have to know it all when you get out of school and for your first year. You definitely don't. You make some mistakes along the way. <laughs> I also finished stuffing 10 of my speech homework folders and here's what they look like. It's just the black folder and then I put the weekly homework inside the page protector and then here's just the welcome letter. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them in the page protector. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure how parents are going to feel about pulling it out and signing it. I might put the word lists in the page protector once I get them. I have to make them up for each individual kid, so I might end up doing just columns of words for all their sounds. And then front and back and leaving that in since that'll stay in their folder and then just kind of putting in the weekly homework behind it. But for now, since I don't have those, I did put them in here just to keep it concise. I did bright paper. Hopefully it entices them to do it. We'll see. I like to think that bright paper attracts me and that I would pay attention to it. I feel like it's important, but you never know. I've been brainstorming ideas for labels that I can put on the folders. I know last week I was talking about the washi tape that I had the year before, but I'm thinking my new idea is full adhesive post-its and I can stick them on and then I can print out their name and speech homework now that I know how to print on post-its and that way it'll make it so much easier. The whole thing will stick down and I'm pretty sure it's not going to end up damaging the folders if I have to change them out as kids are coming into and being dismissed from speech. So I'm going to go on Amazon and see if I can order some full adhesive back 3x3 post-it sticky notes and hopefully that is going to work out. It is about three o'clock right now and I have about half an hour until a student support team meeting for a little friend who were not sure if they get speech and language services. It kind of said they were receiving speech in the write-up but there's no definitive paperwork as to what they were working on or any updates on their progress or how often they were receiving services. So we are meeting with the family this afternoon to kind of just go over that to see if speech was just recommended by the doctors or if they were in fact receiving it. And that's probably gonna take me to the end of dismissal. So after that, I think I'm just gonna pack up and head home because I really do wanna start working on those booklets that I was talking about before for some of my lower speech students for next week with just like transitions and routines and things like that. And as a way to introduce kind of next week's speech. Tomorrow I am planning on going over to my other school to meet with the preschool class there to kind of talk with the teacher, meet the kiddos, kind of see where they're at, do a little bit of observations, and then maybe pull some of the stuff. I was told that they had some lesson plans in an office across the hall and I would just have to get the books, but the lesson plans were kind of already 
done out and we'll see if I can use that as maybe a backup in case my initial book idea doesn't go over so well or in case I finish early or it's too hard or too easy or whatever the case may be I always kind of like to have a backup plan as a, a fallback just in case because you never know always be prepared teacher tip educator tip number one the best tip you can have is always be prepared for the unexpected because it'll happen and if you've got something great if you don't then you're gonna be scrambling good morning guys i'm here at school already i had horrible lighting in front of my house as the sun shifts i'm cloaked in darkness so there's a little bit better lighting here and i just pulled up i'm about to head inside and get started for the day there's a lot that i want to do today I'm hoping to finish my kindergarten hearing screenings and then to be able to head over to the other preschool to meet all the other littles that I have at the other school. I haven't gotten to meet them yet and I'm really looking forward to it, especially after seeing the preschool here at my home school. I am super excited to meet them and just kind of see where they're at and get to know them a little bit. That's the plan so far for this morning. Then I also do want to keep working on the books. I started them last night but there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done. I did find some good apps though when I was looking on, I think Instagram, there's actually a Go Away Big Green Monster app and that is one of my favorite stories for preschoolers around Halloween time because we all know Halloween is my favorite. Miss Smith is all about Halloween. So I'm always super excited. I try to start squeezing it in at the end of September just so that I have enough time to do everything I want to do the whole month of October. I push it a little early, I'm not gonna lie, because it's my favorite and I love it. I just wanted to do a quick check-in before I left for the other preschool to meet my kiddos. So far this morning I have ordered my post-it labels for my homework folders and for my speech folders. I think it should be good. They had them listed and then they said they had two available at the staples closest to me so that I could go right after work and just pick them up. But then they said that they weren't available, but they also let me check out with it. And I did the one hour pickup, so I'm hoping that since I ordered them early enough, if they don't have them, they'll just call me and I can just do the one a few towns over and I'll just have to go and drive a little bit farther. But it'd be really great if they had them there and I didn't have to drive an extra half hour out of my way. So that got done. I also did some of my screeners for some of my kids. The kindergartners are practicing lining up, so I haven't done those little guys yet, but I will get to them. I'm about to leave for my other school to meet all of the littles over there and do some lesson planning, but when I come back, I do want to keep working on the book that I've been doing or the different books for next week as well as keep stuffing my homework folders and just kind of start really organizing my room and getting it ready to have students in here because they're gonna be here soon. My apologies for the late update. It's been a super crazy day, but on the plus side, I got a lot done. I was able to get my friend that has not been in the system into the system and I was able to write up his IEP. I got all the notifications sent home. They are hopefully going to be returned. It got scheduled so we are good to go with that. I scheduled a few other IEPs with some friends and I also got to go over and meet my little preschoolers at the other school and they are so cute. I can't even. They are absolutely adorable. But I got to talk with the teacher for a little bit, kind of just discussing what we're gonna do. Some of our friends over there are not too happy to be away from mom and dad still. So just a lot of hand over hand modeling and a lot of cueing. So I kind of rearranged some ideas. I am working on a book for them for next week that I think we're gonna start with. I checked to see if they had any for the lesson plans that they were talking about, but a lot of it was just not so great. I don't know if I was looking at the wrong stuff, but I just wasn't really impressed with any of the materials. So I've just decided to go ahead and make my own book. And what I'm going to do is have really simple sentences per page, but I'm going to have a lot of visuals and a lot of Velcro so that they have to interact with the book. And I think that's going to work a lot better than going to the library and getting a regular story to try to read because our friends 
there can't really sit for as long as it would take to read a story. So I think these are going to be a lot easier and a lot more hands-on and interactive. So hopefully it will go over really well. Everybody was super nice over there. We got to go out for a recess, just kind of hang out and observe some of my friends. So it's really exciting and I'm pretty pumped to start next week with them. Other than that, it's just been a lot of paperwork. I finally did the dreaded allotment of all of my goals. I came up with this idea last year. What I do is I put all of my goals for language and articulation in grids. And then I just list every child under that that has that goal. So if it's following directions and Johnny, Sally and Jimmy have that, I'll put following directions in one table box and then underneath it, Johnny, Sally and Jimmy. And this way I'm able to have all of my goals viewable at once and I can just go and see who needs to work on what. I used to have it listed by child's name so I'd have their name and then just like next to it all of their goals but this is way easier. It also helps with grouping kids because I can immediately see who's working on the same or similar things or who's on completely different ends of the goal field or who's got language, who has Arctic. So it's super helpful but it is so tedious to make and this year for whatever reason I have like 10 or 15 friends that are working on following directions so my following directions grid is like this big and then all my other grids are like this big and I do try my hardest to fit it on one page front and back I was able to squeeze it in this year so that's awesome because otherwise I'll lose pages and even stapling them I'm a hot mess when I'm in therapy like I'm going I'm moving around so this is just super easy a quick reference and I finally got that out of the way, which was kind of weighing on my mind that I'm writing that IEP for our friend. But both of those things are done today, so I consider today a super successful day. After work, I just have to run to the post office and drop something off for the mail, and then I'm going to go over to Staples because they did email me and say that my order was ready for pickup, so I'm assuming that means that they have my full page post-it notes. Or, not my full page, but the full adhesive back post-it notes. So I can grab those and then tomorrow I can work on making the labels for all of the folders with those. It's time for dismissal and unfortunately I haven't made that much progress on the interactive book so I'm going to take it home tonight to hopefully really work on a big portion of it and I'm going to pack up and get ready to head out to the post office and then over to Staples. So it'll probably be the last time that I see you guys for today just because once I get home, the lighting is terrible <laughs> and I turn into potato mode so I can get some work done. So I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. Hopefully my book will be finished. Good morning guys. So today my lighting is much better at home. So I get to finally update, not from my car, cause that's probably where it looks like I live, but I don't. I am about to go make some breakfast and to pack some lunch for today because I was super lazy last night and didn't do it. I've also only been eating cheese sticks and goldfish. That's a very adult lunch, I feel like. Not at all. Once I finish breakfast, I'm gonna head into work today. I have one meeting and then it is full blown working on my communication books. I did a lot of research last night and I found some really good ideas. I'm hoping to be able to get them done by Friday so that this way I can have them printed and laminated. And then this weekend I can go out and get some Velcro for the icons. All right, so we are off to work right now. I'm getting in early again, not as early as I wanted, but that's okay and hopefully I can get a lot of work done before my meeting at 10 o'clock. I've got my post-its, we are all good to go. This is what I've drawn up and inputted so far, except for I have to make that glue a lot bigger since it looks so tiny. But I have my crayons, my pencil, a desk, a backpack, Legos, the computer, and glue. I still have to import one more picture, and then I have to draw up scissors, friends, classroom teacher, and a few other things. And I think I might make this as a placemat for the kids to have in front of them, and I'll just have these icons in my book, 
and then when I come to the icon I'll have them find it and then one person can stick it down. I want to use velcro because I feel like that's just what you use but then I'm also thinking if I put velcro over it so it sticks and matches up it's going to cover the picture which I feel like defeats the purpose so I'm thinking maybe thumbtack or sticky tack on the backs of the ones that you're sticking on there so it's just easy to identify which one's which and they can just put it on top but I also feel like that doesn't hold up as well so I'm not 100% sure. We shall see. I totally haven't checked in all day. I had a super long speech meeting this morning and it went until about lunchtime and then I got some lunch really quick and I realized that I had to do some updates for some of my data sheets for my students this year, especially after the speech meeting where having some new information that we have to include on those data sheets so i just started making the changes to them and i only got through 10 students and it's honestly so devious so i'm gonna try to do 10 a day but it took me like well, an hour and a half to do the 10 students which is a little rough but right now I am making my post-it labels i just wanted to point out that this did work i did not think it would I don't know why, but I really thought it was going to mess it up, and it didn't, and I'm super excited. The only thing I did notice about these labels is that the edge isn't sticky, which now that I'm thinking about it makes total sense so that you can peel it off, but I think I'm just going to cut that off because otherwise they'll be peeling off the folders like nobody's business, so I think I'm just going to cut that portion of it off and then kind of have it be like one whole sticker that'll work a little bit better but these look super cute they're super bright too so hopefully on the black folder it'll be really vibrant and nobody will lose them or forget them or not have them and they'll remember what it's for which is the most important part so i want to make a bunch that say speech homework and then also ones that say the kids names on them for the in-class portfolio folders so I'm probably going to finish that up. It's honestly, it's already a quarter after three, so the kids are leaving soon. We did a little bit of work on the book, or I did a little bit of work on the book. There's no we here. Sometimes it feels like there's more than one person, but there's not. I did a lot of the graphics and kind of like the clip art for the story, and I decided to do one book and then kind of, I guess, place mats, table mats for the kids with it have like different things like school related things that we can kind of identify throughout the story so when we come across an image in the book they're going to find it on the place mat and then stick the corresponding shape picture on top of it so pretty much just finding and locating things and doing things like that so hopefully that'll go over really well for Monday um, I'm not able, not that I was finished today, but I wasn't able to use the color printer today anyway. What I'm kind of looking into now is a larger laminator because apparently you can buy laminating sheets that are menu size and laminate file folder activities, which is a total game changer because the school laminator is really thin and it always ripples and it always becomes unstuck and it just does a really bad job of laminating the file folders so if I could do it at home with a personal laminator it does a much much better job I'm looking into those I think those are still like they're not super expensive I think they're like 20 bucks but um just the fact that I have to get another laminator add it to my list of things that I need to buy because why can't I just use what I have? This time it actually doesn't fit, so it's legitimate, but it just kind of popped into my head today and all of a sudden I was like, mm, I need a new laminator. So I am kind of working with all that stuff up in my mind and I'm gonna go finish these labels now. I just wanted to show you that it is possible. Um, pro tip, which isn't really a pro tip, common sense, is to have the template and like on, on the computer and then put your font or your text in and then delete the square template. Wasn't doing that the first time, so it was kind of printing on the post-it. You live and you learn. So this is what the folders look like with the first round of post-its. I'm actually gonna bump it up because it's not centered and that's really annoying me, 
but I didn't factor in initially for having to cut off the bottom. But that way the whole thing is sticky and it doesn't come off. The only thing is, and I can't tell if we can see it on this, I don't see it on this one, but on some of them, the toner just kind of rubs off. So I might just have to let them sit for a little bit longer just because of the, I guess the porosity of the post-it note. But I think they look super cute. And then this is the inside with just the letter and then the first week's worth of speech homework. Good morning! It is finally Thursday, almost to the end of the week. We can do this. I really want to finish all of the graphics and make a few other things because the way we're gonna work it for the one group at the other preschool is that one day I'm gonna have a whole group and do the whole class, just kind of like a language immersion session. And then the other two days, we were thinking about maybe doing stations and rotations for kids that were the other kids that I had to see the rest of the week. Cause some kids are two and three times a week. So one time I'll go in, we'll do a whole group lesson and then the other two days I'll work more individually with each of the other kids and I kind of want to build up some things for that I think we're probably gonna end up for next week just going with the storybook that I'm gonna use on Monday just because I think it'll be a good reinforcer and I don't think they're gonna get bored with it that quickly but then moving on from there I kind of do want to develop things so maybe if I do a group lesson with a story on Monday then Wednesday and Thursday I think are the days that I'm going there I can kind of do follow-ups for those it's kind of up in the air. Um, I'm probably going to build one or two things so I have like the next two weeks done but it is just kind of a fly by the seat of our pants trial run. We're going to check it out. If it works, awesome. If not, the classroom teacher and I are just going to reconvene and kind of think of something else that we can do. There are some options for me to kind of jump in and piggyback off of occupational therapy and kind of do like a joint group session with her because she also does the whole class one day and then pulls kids individually so we thought about maybe condensing both of our sessions into the same 30 minutes because they do have music therapy and something else right after so it just you know if it ends up being too much with a half an hour of ot a half an hour of speech and then a half an hour of whatever else they've got um we might just kind of condense our stuff down so this way it's a little bit less overwhelming for the kids but i'm gonna head back into work i woke up super early today like five o'clock. I tried to stay in, in bed, but it only lasted until like 5.30. Still not leaving until 7.30, so I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm pretty sure that you could give me an infinite amount of time to do things, and I would still take all of that time. Like, if you give me three hours, I will take three hours. If you give me 20 minutes, I'll take 20 minutes. I don't know how that works. So I'm gonna head on in now and hopefully get some more footage today but a lot of it is just going to be the same. I don't have any meetings today. Tomorrow I do have two IEP meetings, but those IEPs are written already, so we are good for those. Today should be fun. Hopefully I can get some stuff printed out, made up, laminated. Like I said, I was looking into getting a larger laminator, but regardless, it won't be here for Monday when I have to have my tabletop activities. So... I'm going to have to probably try to make the dreaded school laminator work. It's really finicky. I apologize in advance for the space heater being on. So that awful sound you hear, that's what that is. But it's freezing in here and <laughs> I'm freezing. So it's on because hopefully it'll warm up my room. It's not that big, but my room's also not that big. I'm just so cold. Anyway. I am going to get started today with finishing up my labels and the books and I think that's it. That's not it. Oh, I have to print out the rule sign, the, the, the giant poster version of it and get that done because I want to get that hung up before the kids come in on Monday so they have that huge giant visual. I'm trying not to set too lofty of goals because I know the books are going to take me a really long time. So that is really what I want to get done and then we'll kind of just see what else happens after that. It'll be a bonus. We shall see. Here is my giant sign. I finally was able to print it out. I'm going to have to take it home and cut it obviously and assemble it because I did a half inch overlap and there's a lot of overlap. So I have to cut it 
assemble it and laminate it and then this one is just one that i printed out i really liked it it's actually good because it's a little off center this way but there was some grossness from the printer so i'm gonna have to snip that off so it should be even after that hopefully this works out and i don't mess it up too terribly and then this way i can put it right down here where i was planning to put it i think it'll work out so update i just finished labeling my folders and i really don't think that these are going to be practical now this is the printer that i have is a I can't remember. I can't remember if it's an inkjet or a laser. I want to say it's a laser printer. I think it's laser. It's the one with the toner. So if you have an inkjet printer or one that doesn't use toner, it might work better. But I don't know if you can see that. It is like smudged and chipped off and it faded off on my finger, which is really kind of gross not a fan so i don't think these are going to hold up that well which is really unfortunate because i really liked this idea but we'll see i mean they're on here i'm not going to peel them off but i think i might just use the printed post-its for either data or just kind of like behavior charts for the day and i think that'll look a little bit better but you live and you learn and this is what we've got for now so i'm going to move on to go back to working on the book it's taking a long time i needed a little break but i'm ready to get back all right go team i finally got the sign laminated it came out pretty good this is a little wonky because the laminator is terrible but we'll make it work so now to cut it out and hang it up printing out my book and what I actually ended up doing is even though I have these little icons I think I might just use that in general for something else but for these kiddos I printed out two sets of these and now that I'm seeing it they are much bigger on the same printout but I'm going to cut these out and tape them or put sticky tack on them and then peel them off and then they're gonna have the corresponding picture in their file folder and then they can just put it on there so it's a bigger picture. Also, I grabbed a backpack with all of the supplies in the story so that we could just have a real tangible one. So, let's see, little old one. Here are my file folders that I'm gonna use to make the activities, but I just have the supply box, I've got some pencils, I have the crayons and the scissors in here someplace that I'm going to put inside and we can work on things like open, close, opening the pencil box, finding items, 
and this way it's just more of a, a tactile and there's a physical object so the office was nice enough to let me borrow some of the extra school supplies and then I can just return it Monday after my session but I'm gonna work on putting this together and maybe reprinting these because they're not gonna fit inside the storybook now that I'm looking at it but we shall see update is after school hours I'm actually running out of memory on my card it says I only have nine minutes left so I'm gonna try to make this quick I finished the book and put it together, cut it all out, and then these are my folders that we're going to use throughout the story, and I'm actually downstairs printing them out now, the pictures that are going to go over these cards, and then I will be done, and we will be set to go for Monday's lesson, and then with my kids that are not doing this i actually just have articulation kids on monday so we are going to do the polaroid that i was showing you earlier this week and i think i'm actually going to do this for my preschool kiddos here as well because it's interactive and then i'm also going to have to remember to bring this as well so i think this is going to be a really successful lesson i'm hoping it's a really successful lesson i'll feel really silly if it's not but like I said, I'm hoping that there's enough happening that we have multiple ways to reinforce the vocabulary in the book. And then they've each got a folder. Um, they can share these between the kids and we can either fold it back if it's you know too many choices or just cover them up with some paper. I'll actually remember to bring some computer paper with me. And then the story hopefully is long enough and simple enough and we will just go from there and then like i said i have the actual tangible objects in this box or in this backpack and this way it's just another way to reinforce it i just realized that i have at least four of the same style shirt and then two of the exact same shirt apparently i really like denim shirts not really quite sure why but i got my denim on this week I've totally forgot to end the vlog yesterday, so I'm coming at you from Saturday to say thank you guys so much for watching and for sticking with me, and I will see you guys next week.